Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the New York City Council's first virtual stated meeting. At this time, please place all electronic devices to vibrate and turn on your video. Please check to see that your microphone is on, is on mute. Thank you for your cooperation. I now turn it over to Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020. I am Lori Cumbo and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the City Council's first virtual stated meeting. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Is Adams. Oh, okay. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present and blessed. Bless. Borelli. Blessed and present. <laughs> Brannon. Present. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Blessed and present. Carnegie. Blessed, present, and highly favored. <laughs> Deutsch. Present. Diaz. Present. Drum. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Blessed and highly favored. I'm here. Jonai. Here. Gradenchik. Also blessed and most definitely here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present and blessings to us all. Ku. Present. Kozowitz. Here. Lanceman. Present. Lander. Grateful. Levin. Here. Levine. Very happy to be present. Lewis. Blessed and here. Mizell. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Not allowed to eat in chambers. Miller. Chambers with. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Uh, present. Powers. All right, nice to see everybody. I am present. Reynoso. Present. Peace. Richards. Miss Oyal, present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. En nombre de todos los Latinos, Afroamericanos y Asiáticos que han muerto, presente. Rose. Blessed and present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. I am present and on time here. Valone. Here. Van Bramer. Being very grateful to be here with all of you. I am present. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. I'm here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here and I'm happy to see all my colleagues. Very, very happy to see you all. We have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum of Beit Shushat Torah, located at 130 West 30th Street in Manhattan. 
Thank you so much. And I'm honored to be here with all of you to offer these words as you begin your work on behalf of this great city. And we're so grateful to all of you for stepping forward and doing the work of our city. May the one who has blessed all of our ancestors in all of our lands and in all of our histories bless all of us here today. We stand on the shoulders, each one of us, of those who have come before us, who have lived through times even worse than the ones we are in right now and have blessed us with our lives to remember them, to bring their strength and to their, bring their vision to create a world for those who will come after us as we have come after them. Bless those healthcare workers in our city who every day take their lives into their hands as they save lives. Bless those essential workers and those on the streets of our city keeping it clean and safe and delivering food and essential services so that all of us may live. Bless all those who are working to bring dig dignity to the dead. Our city now counts over 10,000 dead from this virus. We pray for the immigrants, the refugees, the asylum seekers, those who are teachers and parents and grandparents, those who are in our homeless shelters and those who are in our homes and on our streets. We pray for everyone today. And we pray for those of you who represent this city to continue doing the work of government to make things better for all of us, to bring to us a vision of what it could be when we gather together with intention for the good and for the health of all. Please, all of us, those of various faiths and those of no faith, we join together to bring our intentions and to bring our talents, to bring our vision and to bring our humanity to create and a city on which we will build into a future. We use technology to gather together today, but knowing that the one who has made all of us is present wherever each of us is right now. We pray that though we are physically distant, we are spiritually connected, and we pray we will use whatever tools necessary to build up toward the future. We say these words of the Jewish prayer, which expresses gratitude for living to this moment. We thank the one above, the one who has created our souls, the one who is in our hearts for the honor, the privilege to be alive at this moment, to use the work of our hands and our hearts for the good of all humanity. And let us say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Rabbi Kleinbaum, for that powerful and timely and important prayer that our city needs so much right now. I'd now like to ask Speaker Johnson to spread the invocation on the record. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And I want to thank uh, my friend, who I'm so happy to see uh, on the screen, Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum, uh, who serves as a spiritual leader of Congregation Beth Simcha Torah. She was installed as CBST's first rabbi in 1992, arriving at the height of the AIDS crisis. She guided the congregation through a period of tremendous loss and also tremendous change, while addressing social issues of the day and building a strong and deeply spiritual community. Under her leadership, the congregation has become a powerful voice in the movement for equality and justice for all people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and expressions. I have personally worked closely with Rabbi Kleinbaum, who is a source of inspiration to so many in our community, and she is a source of inspiration to me personally. Her temple is in my council district on West 30th Street. I have been there many times for Friday night services, and I particularly have enjoyed their Pride Shabbat the last couple of years. I have fond memories of not that long ago surprising Rabbi Kleinbaum with a proclamation for her 60th birthday. Uh, Rabbi, again, I want to thank you for everything you do and for being with us today as part of this special stated meeting. I also want to thank you for your work serving New Yorkers in your community during this coronavirus crisis. Uh, we are deeply, deeply grateful for you and everything you do for our city, but especially the importance of your voice and of your spirituality and of your guidance 
during these painful weeks we have just lived through. So I wanna thank you for your friendship and for being a wonderful New Yorker. And Madam Majority Leader, with that, I make a motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. I will now recognize you again so that you can provide an overview of today's very historical meeting. Uh, thank you again, Madam Majority Leader. And uh, this is not my speaker time. This is just uh, an overview to give the council members and also the folks that are watching an understanding of what we're gonna be doing today. I wanna welcome everyone to the New York City Council Stated Meeting for April 22nd, 2020. This is a stated unlike anything, unlike any we've ever had before. And I think it's fair to say that this crisis is unlike anything we faced in modern history. New York City is the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic in the United States of America. And as of yesterday, our city has had 134,874 confirmed cases of COVID-19. We have also lost 14,000 427 New Yorkers to this terrible disease. And I don't wanna get lost in numbers. Each one of those losses is a personal story, a family that has lost, that has lost someone, lives that have been altered by this terrible virus. It is a death toll that defies the imagination and includes many frontline workers and public servants who have died in service to our great city. As New Yorkers, we have faced adversity many times before. Hurricane Sandy, September 11th, the Great Recession, the fiscal crisis of the 1970s. But none of those tragic experiences were quite like this. But although this crisis is unprecedented, we will get through this the same way we got through other hard times. We will look out for one another, we will fight to protect the most vulnerable, and we will work together to benefit the common good for this city that we love. We know that the days and months ahead will not be easy, but this city council is committed to doing everything we can to help New York City recover. Today, we are voting on several important and affordable housing items that are crucial to our city. And we are also introducing a COVID relief package that includes bills to extend time for tenants to repay rent and debts, as well as new protections from harassment for commercial and residential tenants. And we're introducing a plan to reopen our streets to pedestrians so they can practice safe social distancing while getting fresh air and exercise that people need to stay healthy. This relief package also includes a New York City Essential Workers Bill of Rights that requires premiums for non-salaried essential employees at large companies, prohibitions on the firing of essential workers without just cause, and paid sick leave for gig workers. I know that we are anxious to get started, but before we begin, I want to explain how we were able to meet today and to provide everyone with a roadmap on the steps we are taking in today's meetings. We are able to meet virtually today because of Governor Cuomo's emergency order 202.1, which suspended certain portions of the public officer's law. This had the effect of allowing for public bodies like the New York City Council to meet virtually. We were also able to meet pursuant to the mayor's executive order 100, which suspended section 42 of the New York City Charter to the extent it requires the city council to hold meetings as provided by its rules and requires us to have two stated meetings per month. This means that we do not need to follow our council rules regulating stated meetings, including the in-person voting requirement. Based on those executive orders, we are gonna move forward with today's meeting and we will be following all of our rules except for rule 8.40A requiring in-person voting. Here is what will happen. First, we'll vote on a motion from council member Karen Kozlowitz, the chair of our rules committee that allows for the suspension of city council rules that would otherwise prevent us from conducting our regular business virtually. After we vote on that motion, we will take a recess from this stated meeting. Then I will suspend the rule requiring in-person votes for committees. 
And we will then have a meeting of the Committee of the Whole. That is a committee made up of all of the members of the City Council. The reason why we are convening the Committee on the Whole is to enable the Council to seamlessly pass laws and resolutions out of committee and still vote on them today, the ones we'll be voting on today. After that committee meets, we will then reconvene the stated meeting and consider the items that pass the committee of the whole, along with other items that were already passed through committees prior to the coronavirus hitting New York City. For all of these steps, we will stay in the same Zoom conference. So the Zoom conference that you're in right now or that you're watching right now is the same Zoom conference where all of this will occur. With that, I turn the floor back to you, Madam Majority Leader Cumbo. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. At this time, I would now like to recognize Council Member Koslowitz, the chair of our Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections. Thank you very much. I move to suspend the rules of the council pursuant to rule 10.20 in relation to certain emergency measures to respond to the public health risk posed by the coronavirus. The suspension and this amendment to the rules of the council would only last for the duration of the declared coronavirus emergency by the governor of New York State or the mayor of New York City pursuant to New York executive law. Since I have not provided one week notice for this motion, unanimous consent is required. I move to suspend the following rules of the council. Rule 2.30, committee of the whole to the extent it requires physically posting a hard copy notice in city hall. Rule 5.10, public access to the extent it requires that a complete transcript of each committee meeting be available for in-person public inspection at the office of the city clerk. Rule 6.00, preparation and presentation of papers to the extent it can be read as requiring that all papers other than committee reports must be deposited in person with the office of the speaker before 1 p.m. at least three business days excluding municipal holidays preceding the meeting day. Papers referred to committee, change of reference, to the extent it only allows the speaker to change the committee assignment of the local law or resolution up until the first meeting of any such committee. Rule 7.50, meetings subsection B to the extent it prohibits a committee from meeting on the day of the stated or special meeting of the council unless the item to be considered by such committee will, out of necessity, be proposed as a general order for that day or such committee meeting is called with the consent of two thirds of the members of such committee. Subsection C, to the extent it requires certain standing committee committees to meet once a month or once every two months. Rule 7.70, required voting subsection to the extent it requires that all committee votes must be cast in person. Rule 7. Point Council Member Kozlowitz, which, which subsection of Rule 7.70? So, subsection A. Great, you can continue. Okay. Rule 7.130, discharge of committee. to the extent it would prohibit a change of reference of a committee assignment pursuant to rule 6.30. Rule 8.40 voting subsection A to the extent it requires that all votes cast at stated charter and special meetings of the council must be in person. Rule 11.60, discharge of committee subsection A 
to the extent it prohibits the council from acting on a matter referred to the land use committee or its subcommittees pursuant to section 11.20 until the committee has reported thereon or the expiration of the time limit for consideration of that matter. In addition, my motion would allow the speaker to suspend any other rule of the council that would prevent the council and its committees from conducting their regular business remotely, as long as that suspension is consistent with federal, state, and local law. To do so, the speaker would need to publish the rules being suspended on the council website. Thank you, Council Member Koslowitz, for your important work. Would any council members at this time like to debate this motion? If you would like to speak, please raise your hand using the feature in Zoom. Madam Majority Leader, Council Member Menchaca has raised his hand. Thank you, Council Member Menchaca. If you would like to speak, please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time expires. Council member, your two minutes is starting now. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the speaker, the staff, and our majority leader, Combo. Um, I just have one question. After listening to uh, Council member Kozowitz's review of the changes. Can I just get a sense of comparison to what we're voting on today to an earlier version of a systems change proposed by uh, by you, Councilmember Kozowitz, back in early March? Are there any differences with that and this one? And whoever wants to answer that question would be great. Lance Pallavi. I'd be happy to answer that question, Councilmember Menchaca. The difference between the motion that Councilmember Kozlowitz distributed to members in March and the one that she has just proposed is that the one in March did not uh, lay out each of the rules that would be suspended. The motion that she has made today that requires unanimous consent lists all of the, the uh, provisions of the council rules that would be suspended. Thanks. Lori, I'm sorry, Madam Majority Leader. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time? Okay, as required by rule 10.20, I ask for unanimous consent to adopt council member Koslowitz motion to suspend- Madam Majority Leader. Yes. Council member Yeager has raised his hand. My apologies. Council member Yeager, please. Council member Yeager, your two minutes is starting now. Thank you, Madam President. Um, as I just want to uh, reflect uh, in addition to what the parliamentarian spoke uh, and uh, to Madam Chair Kostelitz's, uh remarks earlier, uh, and specifically a reference to uh, my colleague, Council member Chaka's question. The, uh, uh, a month ago, the, the resolution that was proposed would have uh, enabled the speaker to suspend any rule of the council and uh, council to the council has worked very hard uh, together with the speaker to and, the, and chair Koslowitz to limit the suspension only to such uh, portions of our rules as would uh, inhibit our ability to conduct these meetings online and to no other matter at all. So it's, it's, a, it's a simple uh, listing of those rules that uh, would have otherwise uh, prohibited us from proceeding the way we're proceeding today and later at the Committee of the Whole. Um, and it's a, it's a statement, I think, by the speaker that he recognized uh, the, the rights and obligations and uh, authorities of members of the council and has respected us in great way to allow us to keep the rules intact, except what is absolutely necessary. And I'm grateful uh, to the speaker. I will be voting yes on this. Thank you, Councilman Yeager. I appreciate that statement. 
Thank you, Council Member Yeager. And I will begin with, as required by Rule 10.20, I ask for unanimous consent to adopt Council Member Koslowitz's motion to suspend and amend certain rules of the Council. Any member wishing to vote against Council Member Koslowitz's motion should raise their hand now in Zoom or object by saying no. Madam Majority Leader, there are no objections. Seeing none, the motion is adopted. I now recognize Speaker Corey Johnson. I would like to make a motion for a recess for about uh, one hour, it might be less, to allow the committee of the whole to meet. If the motion passes, we will stay in this Zoom conference and wait for the committee meeting to begin. We will then consider and vote on the items on the agenda for the committee of the whole. Then we will stay in the same Zoom conference and reconvene this stated meeting. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson. I would ask whether there is unanimous consent for this motion for a recess. Any member wishing to vote against the recess should raise their hand now in Zoom or object by saying so. Madam Majority Leader, there are no objections. Seeing none, the motion is adopted. We will take a recess to convene a meeting of the Committee on the Whole. The stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020 is now in recess. Mr. Speaker, you can now begin the Committee of the Whole meeting. Uh, good afternoon. The Committee of the Whole is now called to order pursuant to Rule 2.30 of the Rules of the City Council. In the Committee of the Whole, a simple majority is required to pass any item. Today, the Committee of the Whole will consider and vote on the following items. Introduction 1854, would make changes to the existing downtown Flushing Transit Hub bid in Councilmember Peter Coos district. The bid is requesting that the council approve the following changes to the district plan. First, extending existing bid boundaries. Second, expanding services to include beautification as well as traffic management and pedestrian safety and authorizing streetscape improvements to complement these services. And third, increasing the bid annual assessment from 380,000 to $1 million funded by the expansion to new properties and by changes in the method of assessment authorized to be calculated on a formula applicable to the class of the property. The city council has provided all required process under the administrative code this included a public hearing with testimony from the administration and the bids district management association and waiting the 30 day period for property owners affected by the proposed changes to formally object. Small business services attested that no property owners filed a valid objection with the city clerk. Council members may now vote in favor of intro 1854 if they can answer the following four questions in the affirmative. First, were all notices of hearing for all hearings required to be held, published and mailed as so required by law and otherwise sufficient? Second, does all the real property within the district's boundaries benefit from the establishment or expansion of the district except as otherwise provided by law? Third, is all real property benefited by the district included within the district? And lastly, is the establishment or expansion of the district in the best interest of the public? All council members have been sent a committee report with details about the proposed bid changes and the process that has taken place thus far. Based on the testimony we heard in support of this action, the written testimony we have received for today's hearing and the support of Councilmember Peter Koo 
in whose district the bid is located, the council may proceed with a vote on introduction 1854. In addition, the council will be voting on the following land use items in Article 11 property tax exemptions. 1898 Harrison Avenue in Council Member Cabrera's district would receive a full 40 year Article 11 exemption to preserve 54 units of affordable rental housing. Grace Senior Housing in Council Berlantzman's district would receive a full 40 year Article 11 exemption to preserve 80 units of affordable senior rental housing. HP Morningside Heights portfolio in the districts of council members Levine and Perkins would receive a partial 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 502 units of affordable rental housing. Turin House in Councilman Rosenthal's district would receive a full 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 189 units of affordable home ownership. Schreiber in Councilman Perkins's district would receive a partial 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 182 units of affordable rental housing. 757 East 169th Street in Chair Salamanca's district would receive a full 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 24 units of affordable home ownership. Howard Amron House in Councilmember Kalos's district would receive a partial 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 11 units of affordable rental housing. Belmont Daniel and Councilmember Rose's district would receive a partial 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 112 units of affordable rental housing. And the Manhattan Avenue apartments in Councilmember Levine's district would receive a partial 40 year Article 11 property tax exemption to preserve 81 units of affordable rental housing. Now on land use actions. 90 Sand Street, a project which would deliver 500 units of housing, many of those units for formerly homeless individuals in Councilmember Levin's district, a rezoning at 364 Avenue of the Americas in Councilmember Chin's district to legalize a gym, Rochester Sud Dam in Councilmember Cornegy and Amprey Samuels districts, a project which includes 78 affordable home ownership units, an Article 11 tax exemption at 272 East 7th Street in Councilmember Rivera's district for the preservation of 19 units, an extension of a ground lease at River Crossing Complex in Councilmember Ayala's district to preserve 147 units of affordable housing, two minor amendments to projects previously approved by the council, Cooper Square in Councilmember Rivera's district and 461 Alabama Avenue in Councilmember Barron's district, a change in a restrictive declaration on Gansevoort Street in the council district that I represent. And finally, we will vote to modify two projects and send them to the city planning commission for scope determinations. 52nd Street in Councilmember Van Bramer's district and the Grand and Pacific Street rezoning in Majority Leader Cumbo's district. Will the clerk please call the roll for a vote on all of the items that I just listed to the members of the council? Before the clerk calls the roll, a point of parliamentary order. Mr. Speaker, I just wanted all members to know that the materials for all of the items that you've just spoken about were sent by email to the members. So all members have these materials in their email. Thank you, Mr. Parliamentarian. And I ask the clerk to please call the roll in a vote on all of the items just listed. Adams. I vote aye on all. Ampre Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. I vote aye. Baron. Permission to explain my vote. Yeah, but I think, Greg, you, you fixed it. Right. Council Member Mr. Barry, Speaker, now. Mr. Speaker, you can approve permission to explain a vote during Committee of the Whole. And permission is granted, Council Member Barron. It's nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. your time is starting now, Council Member Barron. Thank you. I just want to say I vote aye on all 
And as regards the project in my district, 461, this is a technical adjustment. The project had been approved previously. And as you all know, it's designed for people who are living within 30, 40, 50%, 60% of the AMI. And they do again vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Borelli. I vote aye on all, everyone. Brannon. Aye on all. Cabrera. Aye on all. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Uh, aye on all. Carnegie. I vote aye on all. Deutsch. And just if I can make a brief uh, mark. Commissioner. Mr. Yes. Speaker. Thank you. Yes. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your time Speaker. is Commissioner. starting oh. now. Thank you. So uh, before I vote, I just want to um, send my condolences to the families and friends of all those who passed away from COVID-19. And my prayers to all those who are still hospitalized and or are sick at, who, are, who are still sick at home. And I would like to just finally thank all the first responders and all the healthcare workers who are out there and all the members of the council who have been working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, on addressing issues pertaining to their constituents. So um, with that, I just want to vote by and all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Deutsch. I know. Diaz. Council Member Diaz. Uh, he needs to be unmuted. I see him on the screen. Hold on one second, Councilmember Diaz. They need to unmute you. There are some technical difficulties with unmuting, unmuting Councilmember Diaz right now. Uh, okay. No, no. no. So there we go. You're unmuted, Councilmember Diaz. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before I vote, I. I want to, Councilmember Diaz, I want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And I would like to send my uh, soul, my uh, feedback about the death of my great friend, ex-council member, Noah Deal. So I would like to join the family and tell them that uh, we're sorry and that we, we knew him. He was a great man. And uh, saying that, I'm voting yes. Thank you, Councilmember Diaz. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Drum. Aye. Eugene. May I explain my vote? Yes, Councilmember Eugene. Thank you very much. I, I just want to uh, express my, my, my thank and my gratitude to all the first responders, doctors, nurses, and medical professionals who uh, put their life in danger to save life in New York City at this very uh, difficult moment. And I would like also to express my deepest sympathy to all of those who lo lost or their loved one or their friends. And may God bless them and may, may God be with them and give them the comfort that they need. And I want to extend also my deepest sympathy to the parents of one of my staff members, uh, Emer, who also passed due to COVID-19. With that, I put uh, yes and all. Thank you, Councilor Eugene. Gibson. I vote aye on all. Joe Nye. Aye on all. Gordenchik. Aye on all. Holden. Can you hear me? 
Yes, we can hear I had, you. A, I had my hand raised uh, before the vote, and I wanted to ask a question on uh, intro 1854. When were the, um, the, the property owners uh, polled uh, for their uh, approval or disapproval? I can't give you the date, but I can tell you that Councilmember Koo supports it. It went through the entire process and Small Business Services attested to us that it went through the proper protocol and process. Uh, on the normal time frame. any of these uh, bid uh, projects go through when you are looking at furthering the boundaries. So that is what SBS has told us and attested to. And again, the local council member uh, supports this project. I can't give you the exact dates. I don't I have just, I was just concerned that if it was polled before the pandemic, before the emergency, that maybe some of them would have changed their minds, obviously, because they're closed and they're suffering. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, okay, I vote aye on all, but I would have liked to have- um, I want you to know, this is Jason. I just want you to know, we heard from the bid this morning so that's that's as up to date as the information that we have. So we did hear this morning. They are supportive. Okay, I and all. Mr. Thank Speaker, you. before we continue with additional council member votes, council member Yeager has raised his hand and would like to speak about the set of bills that we're voting on as the committee of the whole before the vote continues. Sure, I apologize for not seeing council member Holden or council member Yeager's hand raised. I call on Councilmember Yeager uh, to make remarks about the bills that we're voting on today. Councilmember Yeager, your two minutes are starting now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Before my two minutes clock begins, I'd, I'd like to rise for, or, or virtually rise for a point of parliamentary inquiry, if I may, with your permission, since you're chairing this committee. Yes, sir, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before the roll was called, the question was called and it went straight to a roll call, the matter was not open for discussion and debate as required by our rules and by Roberts. Um, we went straight to a roll call and I, I appreciate that the hands were not seen, but uh, in a typical uh, setting, we would be able to speak into the mic and say, pardon me, Mr. Chair, uh, I wish to speak. And we were not afforded that opportunity. So I would ask that the, that the roll call be suspended, that the question be open for debate. Yes, I'm happy to do that. We're happy to suspend the roll call and open it up for debate. So if there are members besides you who would like to uh, have a discussion about the bills that we're voting on today, people can raise their hands and we can have that debate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And to the extent that members had already voted, uh, they should be permitted to rescind their votes if necessary or to restart the roll from the beginning. Mr. Speaker, the, the, the motion that's in front of us, the question to vote on intro 1854 is uh, with respect to uh, hearings that were held in February of this year uh, and hearings that were held by the community board in 2019, uh, as my colleague stated long before the outbreak. Uh, just to be clear of what it is that we're voting, uh, there are currently 1,100 businesses in this bid. This bill would expand the boundaries of that bid uh, and to encompass an additional 900 new taxpayers. 30 seconds. All of whom, Mr. Speaker, as, as we discussed, this is not explaining a vote. This is a, a debate on the original question. So I would ask that the time be expended accordingly. Um, Mr. Speaker, the, the 900 new businesses that are being added into the bid are now going to receive a tax bill. Many of them are closed. They have been closed for the last several weeks they may never even reopen. Um, my suggestion is instead of voting on this question- Time expired. Today, have, Mr. Speaker, we have an opportunity to uh, continue uh, the <coughs> question particular bill by simply uh, postponing its question to a date later as allowed by our rules. <coughs> uh, and then in that regard, I would move right now uh, to postpone to a date later uh, specifically uh, to hear this in the first stated of November to give us some time to actually see if the atmosphere is correct and right to impose a new tax on businesses in Queens. Um, and under Rule 9.7 of the Council Rules, uh, this, the, this motion is not debatable, it's not required, <clears throat> but it does supersede the debate on the original question and this motion would actually be heard first. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I wanna call on Councilor Peter Koo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Councilmember Koo, your time is starting now. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the bid was formed in 2003. And we still have the original budget of $384,000. When it was formed, the minimum wage was $7 or less. Now the minimum wage is $15. So as you can see, the current budget is not uh, long, uh, sustainable. That's why the bid uh, wants to expand uh, the, uh, the, the area to include more businesses uh, in the consideration. Uh, after this crisis is over, we will need uh, entity like BID to coordinate uh, the, how to revitalize the local businesses. Public-private partnership is really important. Uh, that's why BID is really, really important. Um, so I ask all my colleagues to support this. Uh, they have been doing research and uh, uh, for this expansion for the last two years. This is not something that just came out now. And the local businesses will understand the importance of having a collective leadership uh, and, uh, by bid because bid can uh, help the business to do promotions, uh, to apply for grants, to do all the, all the things that individual, individual business owners cannot do. So I want to thank all my colleagues to support this bill. Please be understandable. This is a good- 30 seconds. And I want to thank Council Member John and I'm all, all my colleagues. This is a very important bill. This is the time to support it, not afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. So we will vote on Council Member uh, Yeager's motion that this be put off. Uh, a yes vote would put this off on us being able to vote on it. A no vote would allow us to vote on the bill today. So I am going to ask the- uh, Mr. Speaker? Yes. Before calling the roll, Council Member Yeager has his hand raised. We already called on Council Member Yeager. Uh, Council Member Yeager, I'm happy to call on you again, but I would like to vote on this motion. Made on this motion, I'd like to just speak one more time just to clarify some things. Uh, I, I did speak with Councilman Koo this morning, and I have an enormous amount of respect for the work he's done with this bid. I, I, again, I want to clarify that this is not uh, in reference to whether or not we like bids. We do, and it's not in reference to whether or not we don't think the bid should needs more money or resources. However, the things that the bid gets the money to do, it is not doing right now. In That's other weird. words, it's not currently having traffic guards, et cetera, and beautification. We, we, we no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. You, made, you made your point before. Peter responded. I am calling a vote on your motion, which if you, if you vote yes on Councilman Yeager's motion, we will put this vote off. If you vote no on this motion, we will proceed with the vote today. So I'm asking the clerk to uh, suspend the previous roll call vote that we had and to go to a roll call vote Mr. Speaker, you're muted. Someone muted me, I didn't mute myself. Okay, so if you, uh, we're gonna suspend the roll call vote from before, and we're gonna go to a roll call vote on Councilmember Yeager's motion. So I'm gonna ask the clerk to call the roll on Councilmember Yeager's motion. Adam. Councilmember Adams? I voted no. You voted no, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ambry Samuel? No. Ayala? We did have a ticket. No. You can't. You can't um, Barron? To briefly comment based on the fact that Jason said, as of today, uh, the comments from the bid were sustaining it, I vote no. Borelli. I vote aye on the motion, thank you. Brannon. I vote aye. Cabrera. No. I vote no. Cohen. 
Uh, can I just briefly explain my vote? Yes. Your time will start uh, now, Councilman McCollum. Thank you. I, I, I can just not think of anybody better uh, situated under these circumstances uh, to advise this body on whether or not we should proceed with the bid expansion other than my colleague, Peter Koo. Uh, so for that reason, I'm gonna vote no on the motion. Constantinidis. No. Carnegie. I vote no. Deutsch. Abstained. Diaz. What do you know? Drum. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time uh, will start now, council member. This legislation was heard in my committee twice already and people had ample time to come in and to participate in the decision-making process. Therefore, I vote no. Eugene. No. Gibson. I vote no. Jonai. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time will start now, council member. Thank you. I clearly understand the issues in a small business chair. I am concerned for the small businesses uh, and what they're this crisis that they're going through. I also understand what my colleague raises as a point that this crisis was unforeseen and those small businesses could not uh, voice their opinion at this time before this vote is being heard. What I know is that we start planning to reopen New York City back again. Bids are gonna be more important than ever to be a voice for those commercial corridors. And after speaking to my colleague that represents the area, as well as the other stakeholders, um, I vote no. Gordon Chick. Uh, brief permission to explain my vote. Sure. Your time uh, will begin now, council member. Thank you, I won't take that long. Uh, I was in on the birth of the original bid um, uh, in 2002 and 2003. There is no community that needs a bid more desperately than downtown Flushing. Um, over 100,000 people a day are at uh, Roosevelt Avenue and Main Street, uh, and they create uh, a lot of activity. Uh, I understand the points taken by my colleague, uh, Councilman Yeager, but I also want to associate myself with uh, the remarks by uh, Councilman Joni, um, in that I believe that the bids in the city will help to lead uh, the small business resurrection when that day, may it come soon, uh, comes that we are able to get out of our houses and our apartments and start to live uh, as New Yorkers have lived for generations. So with that, I vote no on this uh, motion. Holden. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time will start now, Council Member Holden. Thank you. Um, again, I'm concerned about just the, it's a different world now. And uh, property owners will pay uh, more taxes in the future, it looks like. And with another bid piled on, I just want, I would like them to weigh in, not before the pandemic, I would like to hear from them now because the world is different, their neighborhood is different and their businesses are different. So uh, for that reason, I vote aye. Kalos. King. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time uh, will you, start Mr. now, Council Member King. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Common Yeager, uh, Council Yeager brings some valid points to the table. Our world has changed as the district is trying to establish bids and understand the importance of bids in our small businesses. If this piece of legislation moves forward, I would recommend also that when this is the small business stimulus package comes down, that bids are li literally get funded to help those businesses that, that may disappear. Um, after this pandemic. With that all being said, I will vote. I will vote aye for this. Um, and uh, thank you, Cameron, and thank you, Peter Koo. Koo. Hi, may I expand my vote, Mr. Speaker? Yes. Your council, council member, your time will start now. Thank you, my colleagues. I think this is the most important time is now to overcome our anxiety and panic. 
uh, once this crisis is over, we need more on, we need to depend more on BID uh, to support our local businesses. Because BID is an entity that will help promote um, coordinations between government and private uh, uh, entities, and also will promote tourism, promote uh, a lot of things. Uh, individually, individ uh, all these business owners, because they're new immigrants, they don't know how to do it. They don't have a PR person. They don't have a, a, a public accounting person to help them apply grants. So it's important for us to support BID now because they are operating on a budget 13, uh, no, uh, 17 years ago. The budget is still the same. Now it's not sustainable. Everything, the minimum wage is double. Uh, every, uh, uh, the staff is uh, double. So they don't have enough uh, uh, resources to do it. The only thing they can help the business community is to expand and have more resources. In, this in turn will help the local businesses. It takes money to make money. So they contribute a little bit of money, but the reward is much greater later. Thank you. I hope all my colleagues will support this. And 30 I seconds. Vote, I will know on Jaeger's uh, bill. I hope uh, Council Member Jaeger will come visit uh, Foshan downtown before he makes uh, this uh, decision. Yeah. Thank you. Kozlowitz. I absolutely vote no. Lanceman. No. Lander. Vote no. Levin. No. <clears throat> Levine. I vote no. Lewis. No. Mizell. No. Menchaka. <clears throat> uh, permission to explain? Yes. Your time will start now, Council Member. Thank you. Uh, I think that uh, my my vote was not going to be based on whether or not we need the bid to expand or or to to move forward, but I am compelled by the concept that our world has changed and information that is needed to make a decision like this uh, could be better discussed uh, in current times. So I'm gonna support this and I vote aye. And uh, it's making me think about some of the other things on the, on the uh, calendar as well. So I hope we continue this healthier debate. Thank you all, I vote aye. Miller. Negative. Moya. Oh, no. Perkins. Aye. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Powers. No. Reynoso. No. Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Your time will begin uh, now, Council I support Member. Peter Cool wholeheartedly and, and trust his judgment. And now is not the time to, pit, to play petty politics. I vote uh, no. Rivera. No. Rodriguez. <laughs> I, uh, no. Rose. No. Rosenthal. No. Salamanca. I vote no. Torres. I vote no. Traeger. No. Ulrich. I vote no. Valone. I vote no on the motion. Van Bramer. I vote no. Jaeger. 
I vote aye, and I would ask that the roll call on the original question be started from the beginning, given the superseding motion. Matthew. All right. Combo. I vote no. Speaker Johnson. I vote no. I ask the clerk for the tally on the vote on the motion. My vote of seven in the affirmative, 42 in the negative, and one abstention, motion has been defeated. Thank you. I ask for a restart of the roll call vote on all of the items that I mentioned that we're voting on as the committee on the whole today. So if we could start with Councilmember Adams again and re-begin the roll call on all of the items on our <clears throat> calendar. Mr. Speaker, before we begin the vote as a point of parliamentary order, just as with a vote on general orders, for any member who wishes to vote no on any of the individual items that are being voted on for the committee of the whole, please state which items you wish to vote no on. Thank you. And I ask the clerk for a roll call vote. Adams. I still vote aye on all. I'm Bree Samuel. Aye on all. I'm going to put it in the chat. Ayala. Aye on all. Darren. I vote aye. And as I said before, this project is an adjustment for housing that will be designed for people who are 30, 40, 50, and 60% of the AMI. Thank you. Borelli. I vote aye on all. Brandon. I vote aye on all. Cabrera. Aye on all. Chin. I vote aye on all. Cohen. Aye on all. Constantinidis. Uh, and I am so glad to be here to cast this vote because I have been sick for the last 24 days and my wife has been sick for just about the same amount of time with COVID. So I am so glad to be here to be able to cast an eye on all vote. So glad you're feeling better, Costa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Carnegie. Uh, I vote aye on all. Deutsch. I know. Diaz. I know. Drum. I. Eugene. I. Gibson. I vote I on all. Jonai. I on all. Gordenchik. I and all. Holden. I and all. Kalos. I and all. King. I and all. Ku. I and all. Kozlowitz. I on all. Lanceman. Yes. Lander. I. Levin. I. Levine. I vote I on all. Lewis. I on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. I vote. I have permission to explain my vote. Yes. Your Thank time you. will start now, Councilmember Menchaca. Thank you so much. Uh, before I, I give my vote, I, I just want to say how um, 
how much the council is trying really hard to bring out the stated meeting into into your living room. So I'm I'm really speaking right now to everyone who's watching us. Oh my God! To our democracy, and so the the work that I want to do here is really ensure that we as a community engage all these questions. There are 16 land use items. And what I wanna really do is ensure that everyone has access to this information. And so I wanna thank anyone who's watching right now. This is important, um, not only important for the council to keep doing this work, but for you to engage. Our best will only be as best as your engagement on the ground. Uh, and so uh, with that, I'm gonna say yes and I to all of the items on the list of, uh, on, the, on the roll call today. And thank you. Thank you. Miller. Affirmative. Coming up, affirmative. Is it? Moya. Aye. Perkins. Affirmative. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Uh, proud to uh, vote aye. And let me just say, Queens knows how to lead the way. And I trust uh, my colleague, uh, Council Member Ku, and to my, count, my colleagues, uh, Costa and Barry, uh, thank you for your leadership. Uh, you've actually gone through something. So keep the petty politics out of this. Thank you, I vote aye. Rivera. With a thank you to my colleagues for East 7th Street and Cooper Square, I vote aye. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Council Member, your time is starting now. I know that for many individuals, uh, many New Yorkers, they will be you know, looking at us on how we had the determination that- I am not muted. There you go, Billy, now we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Council Member Rosenthal, I, I was not muted. Okay. Permission no to problem. explain my vote? Yes. I'd like to- Council Member, your time uh, will start now. Thank you. I'd like to thank the leadership of Turn House uh, on their tireless efforts to maintain ownership affordability their work began years ago, uh, prior even to my election, six years ago. They've endured multiple meetings uh, and, and unfortunately, purposefully uh, misinformation. Uh, there were owners who wanted to allow these apartments to return to the free market, thus depriving our district of needed affordable housing ownership. Um, I, I appreciate the tenacity of Turin House leadership. This vote is dedicated to them. And I also want to thank my colleagues for their support of affordable housing on the Upper West Side of New York City. With that, I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you, Helen. Salamanca. Uh, I vote aye on all. Torres. I vote aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye. Valone. Aye on all. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Jaeger. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1854 in which I abstain. Matteo. We didn't hear his vote. Uh, Minority Leader Matteo, if you could recast your vote when you're, if you're not on mute. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye and I wanna thank all the staff who worked really, really hard to make this possible. Uh, thank you to all of them. I'll say a little bit more 
about them in a little while, but I really want to thank them for uh, getting all this together for us today. I vote aye, and I ask the clerk uh, to please read the results of the roll call vote of all the items that the Committee on the Whole voted on today. All items on the agenda for the Committee of the Whole are adopted, 50 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of intro 1854, which was adopted by the Committee 49 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. Thank you. Uh, the meeting of the Committee of the Whole is now adjourned. All council members, please remain in the Zoom conference as we will reconvene the stated meeting shortly. Madam Majority Leader. Yes. You can now reconvene the stated meeting. Good afternoon and welcome back to the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020. We will now have the adoption of minutes by council member powers. Thank you. I now, thank you, uh, majority leader. I now move the minutes of the stated meeting of February 11th, 2020 and February 27th. Council member powers. Yes. Can you please pause? Yes. Madam majority leader. Yes. I ask that you please state that the meeting will stand at ease. The meeting will stand at ease at this time. I believe we're having some technical issues with the feed, which is why we're standing at ease. We wanna just make sure that all council members have access as well as that it is live streaming appropriately. So that is what the staff is working on right now that is why we are standing at ease. Mr. Parliamentarian. Madam Majority Leader. Yes. The technical issues are resolved. You can now recognize council member powers. We will now have the adoption of minutes by council member powers. All right, second time. Uh, I now move the meetings of February 11th, 2020 and February 20, 27th, 2020 be adopted as printed. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor. Communication from the mayor, mayor M230 through M236, mayor's executive budget, expense, capital, and CD budgets and supporting schedules. Finance. M237, city debt and reserves. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. M238, withdrawing the name of Nisha K. Butler for appointment to the New York City Tax Commission. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. 
M239, communication from the chancellor submitting the proposed amendment to the fiscal year 2020 to 2024 five-year capital plan. Referred to finance. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. Uh, M240, I will now ask the clerk to call the roll for today's land use call-up item. This is just a vote on the land use call-up calendar right now. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. I vote aye. Constantinidis. I vote aye. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Aye. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowit. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. I vote aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Thanks. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. I vote aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call up vote is 50 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. Today's land use call up is adopted. We'll now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson, and I would like to thank him for his incredible work in keeping this body together and organizing this unprecedented meeting today. Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, everyone. I am so proud of the work that we are doing together despite these physical challenges that we are facing right now. And I wanna thank uh, each council staff member who has put in countless hours 
to make this happen. This is an extraordinary stated meeting because it shows the council's commitment to public service. We were elected to serve our constituents in all 51 council districts. And our mission is to come together to create and pass legislation to help all New Yorkers in our diverse city. And that is needed now more than ever. This crisis has exposed so many of the structural, racial, and income inequities that plague New York City. Inequities in our healthcare system, in our governance, and in our schools. And it is my sincerest hope that through this tragedy, we will find opportunities to address these long-standing inequalities to build a better New York City. This is what we owe the more than 14,000 New Yorkers who have died from this terrible virus. And that work begins with this stated meeting today. I mentioned earlier the enormous losses of life that we have suffered as a city in the last month or so. And I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge two former council members who we lost in this pandemic. Arlene Stringer Cuevas, who represented Washington Heights and is the mother of city controller Scott Stringer and Noach Deer, who represented Midwood Borough Park in Bensonhurst. We extend our condolences to their families. I also want to express condolences on the passing of council member Salamanca's father. Rafael Salamanca Sr. died of coronavirus on April 3rd and we are sending you, Rafael, and your family our love. In addition, I want to acknowledge that council members Torres, Barron, Levine, Constantinides, Valone, and Gredenchik, and I believe Ayala, have all been sickened by COVID-19. I am grateful that they are with us today and back to serving their constituents. As we do during each stated, I would also like to acknowledge those who have died from 9-11 related illnesses since our last meeting. Retired FDNY firefighter Steve Brickman died on April 12th of 9-11 related illnesses. He was 57 years old. Sergeant Sean Cameron, a retired member of the department, recently lost his battle with 9-11 related cancer on April 8th. He was 52 years old. I want us to take a moment of silence for former council members, Arlene Stringer Cuevas, council member Noach Deer, Rafael Salamanca Sr., firefighter Brickman, Sergeant Sean Cameron, as well as all of those who we have lost in our city and state and all over the world who have succumbed to this terrible virus. May we please now have a moment of silence. Thank you. Today is Earth Day and it marks the 50th anniversary of the celebration of our planet and the fight for environmental protections. We are expecting, we are experiencing a terrible public health crisis right now, but we can't forget about the other work, the other important work we have to do to protect our planet. And New York City has some of the strongest policies in the country to protect the environment. And the council will continue to push for bold change in this area in order to make sure our city and planet are strong for decades to come. This Friday, we usher in the holy month of Ramadan. I wanna wish all of those celebrating a very generous Ramadan. New York City's Muslim community has contributed so much to our cultural fabric. So let us all take this month to remember the contributions of Muslim New Yorkers and we weren't able to meet, but I hope everyone had a, had a good Passover and a nice Easter uh, during this really important time in our city. And my last item before we get to our legislative agenda, I said it before, but I wanna wish a happy birthday to council member Ruben Diaz Sr. Okay, let's dive into our legislative agenda. As New York City's affordable housing crisis deepens, urgent action must be taken. The council's voting on a number of items that will preserve and establish affordable housing. I detailed most of those items just a few moments ago during the committee of the whole meeting. So in the, in the interest of time, I will not repeat those descriptions now. 
But in addition to voting to those items as a full council, we will also vote on several other measures and they are as follows. A rezoning at 271 Seabreeze Avenue to allow commercial use in council member Deutsch's district. A rezoning at 81 18 13th Avenue in council member Brandon's district to legalize an existing office. The Queens Boulevard MIH text amendment in council members Holden and Van Bramer's districts to facilitate two new residential developments, including mandatory inclusionary housing, a health and hospitals lease at the Seaview campus for a residential substance program in, council, in minority leader Steve Matteo's district, the rescission of a landmark in Chair Salamanca's district, and the landmark designations of Tin Pan Alley buildings at 47 through 55 West 28th Street in the district that I represent. Also an amendment to a previously approved tax exemption at Cooper Square MHA for property in Council Member Rivera's district to allow community facility use for 327 affordable cooperative units in a community land trust. With that, I turn it back over to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will first recognize council members who signed up by email and then recognize members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Just wanna remind all members to raise your hand and please wait uh, for remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. And just to remind folks, this is to speak on the items that we are voting on uh, today. Madam Majority Leader. Yes. Council Members Rodriguez, Amprey Samuel, and Van Bramer are the first to sign up. We will begin in the order that was just spoken of. Council Member Rodriguez, your time is starting now. Yes, one is the one uh, lead by Speaker Johnson and council member Kalina Rivera on the 75 mile street that we should be dedicated more for pe to pedestrian and cyclists. I would like for all, all of us to join into that effort. All the city had done it, New York City should do it too. This is an opportunity that as we are celebrating every day, we should show our commitment to dedicate more streets to pedestrian and cyclists. Second, I would like to also say thank you to council member Constantinide for allowing me to be a co prime in the resolution that we are calling to support Council Member Gennaro, I mean, Senator Gennaro and Senator Gustavo Rivera, who are looking to get the, the, the state legislator to, plot, to pass the bill and for the governor to sign that will provide free rent for three months to tenants and, and tenants and a small business owner. Eh, hoy yo quiero uno pedirle de que todos yo, eh, apoyemos el paquete de leyes que estamos buscando apoyar a las personas que son víctimas de este coronavirus, entre ellos uno que busca dedicar espacio a la carretera en el día de hoy celebrando el Día de la Tierra para peatones y ciclistas y el otro que es una resolución que junto con los senadores Gustavo Rivera y Gennaro estamos, bus estamos buscando de que la legislación de Albany pase una ley para proveer renta gratis a los inquilinos y pequeños negocios que están sufriendo por el coronavirus. Esperamos de que la legislación vote esta ley y que el gobernador la firme y le pido a que todos los concejales me apoyen, nos apoya Constantino y a mi persona en esta resolución que busca renta gratis a personas que son los inquilinos y dueños de negocio. Thank you. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, I just want to thank you, Councilman Rodriguez. I just want to remind members, we are discussing now, this is a, a discussion of the things that we are voting on uh, today for other items of bills that are being introduced. If folks could hold that until general discussion at the end of the meeting, as we always do uh, at the stated meeting of the council, that would be the best time to discuss bills that are being introduced or other items. I turn it back to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. And our next council member that was identified to speak. Thank council you, everyone. Thank council you. member, your time is starting now. 
Um, in the interest of time, I posted my statement to social media, and it was in reference to the vote that we just took during the Committee of the Whole. But thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Council member, your time is starting now. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to say that on this Earth Day, there are a few things that we can do as important as ending car culture uh, as we know it. Uh, so I wanted to particularly uh, praise uh, Speaker Johnson and Council Member Rivera for their uh, bill uh, and for their uh, legislation calling for uh, 75 miles of car-free roads in the city during the crisis. But I also want to say that we should begin by closing the south outer roadway of the Queensboro Bridge, uh, which has been an immediate crisis affecting uh, so many people. Uh, we can do that and we should do that uh, already, if not uh, before that. Uh, and I just also want to say I'm uh, calling in from the great borough of Queens, which might be one of the hardest hit places in the world, um, but there's no place I'd rather be than in this borough with the greatest people on the face of the earth as we fight through this crisis uh, in Queens. Uh, and, and lastly, before I joined this call, I joined a Zoom funeral for Meyer Morris, who uh, was someone who helped raise me. Uh, the first Zoom funeral I've ever had to attend um, and uh, he was my constituent, but he also helped raise me, uh, the, the father of my childhood seconds. best friend. So uh, he's being buried as we speak. Uh, so I want to say on behalf of Meyer Morris and all of those that we've lost, uh, you're in my heart forever. And I am forever grateful for the role that you played in my life. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. Madam Majority Leader, the next three speakers are Council Members Miller, Cabrera, and Menchaca. Thank you. Council Member Miller, your time is starting now. Did we unmute Council Member Miller? <clears throat> I have restarted the clock whenever you're ready, Mr. Council Member Miller. Uh, hold on one second. I don't see. Councilman Miller, are you there? Let's go to the next council member and then we can go back to Councilman Miller. Oh, council council member Cabrera, followed by Menchaca, followed by Miller. Council member, Menchaca, uh, council member Cabrera, your time is starting now. Yes, and, uh, for the interest of time, uh, I'm going to do a pass. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Council Member Menchaca. Council Member Menchaca, your time is starting now. Thank you all. And uh, I wanna just go a little bit further in my uh, statements around the land use items. Uh, there are 16 land use actions. Uh, I was able to connect with some of you about what those actions are doing in, in the districts uh, that you represent and really just to offer support. I think what's really important here that the work that had happened before each of these land use actions were in pre-COVID times. And I, I just wanna to continue to ask that question. Uh, community boards made decisions in pre-COVID times and COVID has transformed everything. And so I wanna just keep mindful of that. Um, the work that our neighborhoods do every day to support that work um, at the neighborhood level is just so important. And our work to connect to that is great and important as well. Um, so you all know that ULERP is not my favorite thing in the world. Uh, I think I have a lot of issues with it in general. Um, so I prefer that we really spend time thinking about it and we want to think about it with you uh, on the ground. And so with that, um, uh, I vote aye. Thank you, Council Member Menchaca. Do we now have Council Member Miller available? He's not available yet. Okay, who's next? No other members have signed up for discussion of general orders. If Councilman Miller comes back, he can of course uh, make his statement when it is the time to vote during his voting time. Uh, thank you. 
Thank you. And so we will allow Council Member Miller to speak um, at a later time. We will now move on to the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 617 and Reso 1290, Seaview Canvas. Couple of general orders. LU 618 through 622 and accompanying Reso's Timpan Alley. Couple of general orders. LU 623 and Reso 1296, landmark designation rescission, PS 31. Couple of general orders. LU 627, 271, Seabreeze Avenue. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 630 and Reso 1297, 13th Avenue rezoning. Couple of general orders. LU 631, Queens Boulevard text amendment. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 640 and Reso 1298, Cooper Square. Couple to general orders. Report of the Committee of the Whole. Intro 1854, Downtown Flushing Transit Hub bid. Couple to general orders. Pre-considered LU 646 and Reso 1299, 1898 Harrison Avenue. Couple to general orders. Pre-considered LU 647 and Reso 1300, Grace Senior Housing. Couple to general orders. Pre-considered LU 648 and Reso 1301, HP Morningside Heights. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 649 and Reso 1302, Turin House. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 650 and Reso 1303, Schreiber. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 651 and Reso 1304, East 169th Street. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 652 and Reso 1305, Amron House. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 653 and Reso 1306, Belmont Daniel. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 654 and Reso 1307, Manhattan Avenue Apartments. Coupled on general orders. LU 616 and Reso 1308, East 7th Street. Coupled on general orders. LU 626 and Reso 1309, Gansford Street. Couple of general orders. LU 628 through 629, Grand Avenue and Pacific Street rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 637 through 639 and accompanying Reso's Rochester Sudan. Couple of general orders. LU 641 through 642, 52nd Street rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 643 through 644 and accompanying Rezzo's 90 Sand Street rezoning. Couple of general orders. We considered LU 655 and Rezzo 1315, 364 Avenue of the Americas rezoning. Couple of general orders. Pre-considered LU 656 and Reso 1316 River Crossing. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 657 and Reso 1317 461 Alabama Avenue. Coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar. LU 627 and Reso 1318 Seabreeze Avenue. Coupled on general orders. LU 631 and Reso 1319 Queens Boulevard. Couple of general orders. And at this time, I'm asking the clerk to please have a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on the general orders calendar, all the items that we just uh, went through. Mr. Clerk, I'm requesting a roll call vote on all of those items. Mr. Speaker. Adam. Yes, Mr. Parliamentarian. Before we begin our, our roll call vote, I believe Councilmember Miller is now back on the line. We may want to give him an opportunity to speak before yes. voting. Yes, before we vote, I would like to recognize Councilmember Janique Miller to speak. Councilmember Miller, your time is starting now. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, could we, could we uh, uh, put that to uh, general discussion? Yes, sir. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you so yes. very much. Thank you, Councilmember. I request a roll call vote on all the items on today's general order calendar, Mr. Clerk. Councilmember Adams. Aye on all. I'm Bree Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. 
Barron. I vote aye on all, and I do request to be added to the general discussion law. Thank you. Borelli. I vote aye on all. Brennan. No, oh, aye on all. Can we please Cabrera. add cell phones to vibrate, please? I, I on all, and please add me to the discussion list. Thank you. Tin. I on all. Cohen. I. Constantinidis. I on all, and please add me to the discussion list. Carnegie. Uh, Deutsch. I and all. Diaz. I and all. Drum. I. Eugene. What I. Gibson. I what I. Jonai. I and all. Gordenchik. I and all. I responded for the uh, discussion list, so if I'm on it, good. If I'm not, please add me to it. Thank you. Holden. I and all. Halos. I and all. King. I and all. Who? I on all. Kozlowitz. I on all. Lanceman. I. Lander. I on all. Levin. I on all. Levine. I vote I on all. Lewis. I own all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. I own all. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Bill? Yeah. Perkins. Hello? Am I calling? Councilman Perkins, how do you vote? I vote I on all. Powers. I on all, and Steve Levin, your child is adorable. <laughs> Reynoso. I vote I on all. Richards. Council Member Richards. I vote aye. Thank you. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye on all. Rosenthal. Aye on all. And Council Member Levin, your child is wonderfully distracting. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Salamanca. I don't know. Torres. Call Councilman Torres again. I vote aye. Council Member Torres. Thank you. Hello? We got it, yes. Richard. Traeger. I vote aye and please add me to general orders. <laughs> Ulrich. Uh, I, vote, I vote aye and I hope everybody stays safe and healthy. Thanks, Eric. Valone. Aye on all. Van Bramer. Aye on all. Jaeger. 
I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1854 in which I abstain and I vote no on land use items 618 through and inclusive of 622 uh, consistent with my position that I stated before in the council that uh, land markings uh, without the owner's consent constitute an unconstitutional taking under the Fifth Amendment. Thank you. Matteo. I vote aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. And I ask the clerk to read the results on today's votes on the items on the general order calendar. The vote on all items for today's general order calendar is 50 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of introduction 1854, with a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, one abstention, and land use items 618 through 622 and their accompanying resolutions, with a vote of 49 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Land use calls remain unchanged. Thank you. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Madam Majority Leader. Yes. Council members Miller, Adams, and Chin are the first to have signed up. Okay, we will begin with Council Member Miller. Council Member Miller, your time is starting now. Thank you, Majority Leader. And uh, it is so great to see all my colleagues out here uh, and, and out in the struggle continuing to work. As we know, COVID-19 has taken an awful toll and an immeasurable uh, a toll on our city, state, and our country. Yet despite this devastation and, the, and disarray that we have suffered, the one constant throughout this ordeal has been our city's workforce. Our municipal and uh, essential workers have once again stepped up. As I often say, uh, as a chair of civil service and, and, and labor, it is the men and women of our work for, city's workforce that give this city value. It is the reason why 65 million tourists, Amazon, Google, and so many others want to come to New York City. These brave uh, public and, and private employers, employees have braved this disease with remarkable courage to preserve our health, safety, and our way of life, and have done so through great perils and cost, personal costs of their own. Whether in times of prosperity or crisis, the inherent value of these workers has always been defined, has always defined our city's greatness. The majority of them are, are, are among the 5 million men and women of color who represent the council's New York City's Committee on Civil Service and Labor and the committee, uh, the, the council's Black, Latino and Asian Caucus. The sad commentary is that for all that they have given to our city, that we have received far less in return, and our conti and continue they continue to bear the brunt of the brunt of the COVID nineteen. Thirty seconds. So once again, we emerge from under this. Uh, once we emerge from this side of the pandemic, we must commit to addressing and resolving these racial and social economic disparities in the healthcare, transportation, financial and educational infrastructures within the communities of color, which are not reflections of inner city poverty, but generational and structural racism that persists and government neglect. And so I'd like Time. to everyone, thank you. And uh, Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you, Council Member Miller. Next speaker. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Adams, your time will start now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. And hello to all of my colleagues. I miss being in the same room with all of you. 
I am so pleased to introduce today uh, and be a part of the package that encompasses a small business COVID-19 bill, which I encourage my colleagues to sign on to. This bill would make threatening a commercial tenant based on their status as a COVID-19 impacted business or person a form of harassment punishable by a civil penalty of $10,000 to $50,000. Unfortunately, thousands of businesses in our city are suffering as they've been forced to close due to COVID-19. As availability of federal loans is limited, many businesses are unable to pay their rent, and this leaves them vulnerable to harassment from landlords looking to find ways to collect or get the tenant to voluntarily abandon the property so they can find tenants willing and able to pay higher rents. The threat of harassment will particularly impact the city's small, independently owned and immigrant owned businesses, many of which were operating on thin margins and struggling to pay rent even before this crisis. Today, also, along with Council Member Cornegie, we're introducing a deed fraud bill, which would require reporting on complaints received and investigations regarding recorded document fraud. Home ownership is a part of the American dream, but in times of financial uncertainty, homeowners can become targets for deed fraud. Unfortunately, state law prevents us from doing more rigorous checks before a deed 30 is- 30 seconds. Until there is a shift of the state law, the city council must demand updates and accountability from the office of the sheriff on the outcomes and strategies of their investigations. I ask my colleagues to support both of these very important pieces of legislation. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. Next speaker. Councilmember Chin, your time will start now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. And glad to see all my colleagues. Um, I wanna take this opportunity to thank you, Speaker, uh, to Jason, all the central staff, and all my colleagues during, uh, for your support during this pandemic. And also to my team, for all their hard work in serving our constituents. And to all the frontline workers, uh, the healthcare workers, the first responder, all the essential workers, delivery workers, grocery workers, they're working so hard um, to keep us healthy and strong. And that's why as city council, we have to do more to protect them, protect their family, and make sure they come out of this crisis also healthier and stronger. And finally, I wanted to give a big thank you to all the service provider, all the volunteers and donors who have stepped up during this crisis to deliver food and supplies um, to our healthcare workers, to our seniors and to our families in need. And I pray that all of us will come out of this pandemic more united and stronger together. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Kuhn. The next three speakers will be? The next three speakers are Council Members Gibson, Valone, followed by Lewis. Council Member Gibson, your time is starting now. Thank you so much and good afternoon to all of my colleagues. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. And every one of you, um, I join with all of you in first and foremost expressing our thoughts and prayers and condolences to everyone across our city who has lost a loved one, a relative, a family member, a neighbor to this COVID-19 pandemic. Those that remain in the hospital that are struggling to survive, we pray for healing. Um, I am reminded that this too shall pass. And we are New Yorkers, we're tough, we're resilient. And I know we will get through this, we will survive, we will thrive and we will be stronger than ever. It has been overwhelming, emotionally draining for all of us as we continue to do this work. We take care of our families, our children, we serve our districts. There's so much going on. There's a lot of information that's being shared, the coordination of services, but I join with all of you in saluting every first responder, essential worker, frontline worker, all of our public servants, men and women that go to work every day to serve the public and risk their lives to protect us and save New Yorkers. I'm reminded that many of our public servants are hardworking men and women of color, predominantly women and women of color, and we salute you every day for everything you're doing. The cafeteria workers at our schools, the crossing guards, small businesses, grocery workers, everyone, we thank you. I think as we move forward and we learn about some of the deficiencies and gaps in services and challenges that we face, 
I am reminded that a borough like mine of the Bronx has had a higher rate of hospitalization and deaths because of underlying health disparities. So I look forward to working with all of you, my colleagues, as we not only address a COVID post world, but also some of the challenges we faced prior to COVID. Again, my prayers to everyone. I thank you colleagues for introducing a comprehensive package today. And I look forward to our continued work. God bless us all. Um, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. We will now move to Council Member Vallone. Council Member Vallone, your time is starting now. First off, I wanna thank our speaker, Corey Jans Johnson and his staff for really putting this unprecedented hearing together and giving us a chance to see our fellow colleagues. Thank you, Corey, for all of that and being our rock for all of us. To myself and the fellow council members who have been uh, struck with this unbelievable disease, um, the rest of you have really given us the, the prayers and the health and the love that we needed for our families to get through these very scary times. And it really humanized what every person had to do during this crisis from the moment you decided you needed to get help, where to get help, and the realization of how dependent we were and are on our first line workers, our responders, our healthcare workers, our delivery workers. My life is completely dependent on everyone who has helped us. So I wanted to say thank you for my family and for everyone who has really just from dropped things to the door to sent us messages. Uh, my heart is to everyone who is suffering and has lost someone. Um, today, there is so much uh, that we need to thank, and I just wanted to congratulate our fellow members for all the pieces of legislation that are in there today, and those who signed on to our resolution calling on the federal government to not continue to forget our co-ops and condos. It's really our last passage of affordable housing, and it's not in any of the relief packages of the PPP loans or the CARE Act. So we're asking um, the fellow council members to join on it, almost half of you are now, so 30 the seconds. Next one financing will include co-ops and condos. That's the reso that's on today. And my only caveat for the day would be that we tread lightly when we're talking about so many miles of our streets. Um, yes, Manhattan is different than the rest of the boroughs and we need to have some space. But what we do, we do temporarily and that we look to full hearings to talk about impacts from everyone if we were to do anything beyond uh, temporary emergency acts because we are dependent on those very streets, all of us not just certain groups. Uh, Time. With that, I want to say thank you. God bless everyone. Thank you so much and so glad to see you in good health. Uh, Councilmember Lewis. Councilmember Lewis, your time will start now. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very, very grateful to see everyone um, and to see everyone well, happy, and healthy. Uh, I want to thank all of our first responders and everyone that's just been doing a great work on the grounds. Um, in all of our districts and all of our communities. I wanna thank you, um, Speaker Corey Johnson for your leadership. And I wanna thank the legislative division for helping me push these two pieces of legislation forward. Um, in the interest of time, I'll be really quick. Um, today, I'll be introducing two pieces, uh, intro 1929, which would create a public alert system to be used in missing persons cases where the person is believed to be in imminent danger. And intro 1928, which would require the NYPD to compile, send, and post a yearly missing persons report disaggregated by race, age, gender, police percent, person, uh, sorry, uh, percent of cases solved and proportion of which cases involved of human trafficking. Um, I urge my colleagues to sign on to 1928 and 1929. These two public safety bills can help increase awareness and save more lives. And I also wanna thank council member Joe and I for allowing me to co-prime on 1921. I don't know if he's speaking about it today, but it's a very good bill and I wanna encourage everyone to sign on. And thank you so much, majority leader. Madam Majority Leader, the next three members who have signed up are Gridenchik, Rivera, and Powers. Council Member Gridenchik, your time will start now. Thank you very much. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, their personal concern for myself and my family. Um, this disease is nothing to be trifled with, as uh, many of us have found out, so thank you. I want to thank the speaker and the entire council team for putting this together today. Um, it's critical that government function in New York City, and we have shown that that is possible uh, despite what we're going through. I want to thank my own team, led by my chief of staff, Ari Gershman, 
uh, for keeping up and uh, helping out uh, many, many people in my district and elsewhere um, when I was flat on my back. Um, I wanna thank um, our first responders and everybody um, who is fighting this terrible disaster. Um, I know that we have lost uh, over 10,000 New Yorkers, many of them city workers who have given their lives in performance of their duty and our thoughts and our prayers are with them and their families at this time. I wanna echo the concerns of my colleague and my dear friend, uh, Paul Vallone. And we must remember that New York City is spreads out over 300 square miles. Uh, traveling in my district uh, is very difficult by mass transit, even more so these days. Uh, I delivered food today on behalf of Common Point um, uh, in Eastern Queens. None of the people that I delivered to today would be able to get around without a car. Um, some of them lived almost a mile from the nearest grocery store. So uh, it's a very large city. Uh, and we 30 have seconds. To that. Thank you. Um, in sum, uh, growing up, when I was a little boy, we used to drive along the Cross Bronx Expressway visiting family and vast stretches of our city were burned out in the early 70s. New York City came back because we worked hard and we were smart and we will get over this, I assure you. Uh, New York City is always gonna be a place where people are gonna wanna come to live, to work, to raise their families and to retire as well. So let's stay, keep Time. our foot on the accelerator. Thank you very much. Madam Majority Leader, Council Members Rivera, Powers, and Levine. Council Member Rivera. Council Member Rivera, your time will start now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to everyone out there who made this happen, especially the staff and to all the first responders and, and workers who are keeping us safe, healthy, and comfortable. I wanna just highlight two bills I'm introducing today. First, legislation that would temporarily require the city to open approximately 75 miles of city streets to pedestrians and cyclists during the COVID-19 pandemic in order to provide New Yorkers with more room for social distancing. Cities across the country from Boston to Oakland have taken similar measures, but if passed, we would be the first legislative body to pursue an innovative program such as this. We have seen just this week in reports from urban planners that almost all of our city sidewalks are not safe for social distancing. Our open streets bill will increase space for essential workers to commute safely. It will supplement our already crowded parks, which will only become more cramped this summer. And it will bring equity to communities of color that for decades have lacked the open spaces that we are fortunate to have in other neighborhoods. As the chair of the committee on hospitals, I encourage all of you, my colleagues in the council to support the passage of this bill as quickly as possible in order to prevent further infections and further strain on our heroic hospitals and their staff. An open streets program, just like washing hands and face coverings will save lives, plain and simple. The speaker and I are also introducing legislation as part of the council's coronavirus relief package, which will temporarily suspend personal liability. 30 seconds. Releases and related rental agreements of businesses impacted by COVID-19. This will ensure city business owners don't face the loss of their businesses and personal financial ruin or bankruptcy as a result of this state of emergency. These businesses are closing and losing weeks of income through no fault of their own and allowing small business owners to keep their spaces will be integral to the city's ability to recover after the virus. I hope you will join us in co-sponsoring this bills and this coronavirus relief package before us today. Time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Council Member Rivera. Now we'll hear from Council Member Powers. Thank you. Thank Council you. Member Powers, your time will start now. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. And it's good to see everybody again, even in a virtual setting. I do miss everybody here. And thank you for all the good work you're all doing. And wanted to offer some condolences and some prayers today for those who, uh, unfortunately, we've lost uh, along the way in this difficult moment. And I wanted to offer my deepest condolences to our colleague, Rafael Salamanca, for the passing of his father, uh, as well as to controller Scott Stringer for the passing of his mother, and also remember the lives of many who couldn't be here, including uh, Councilmember Noak Deer, who I know passed uh, last week, many members of the NYPD, many members of the Corrections Department, uh, and two folks in city custody who have passed away, and countless many more. Um, they've been devastating to our city and, of course, to their families as well. And I also wanted to send my thoughts and prayers to the family of uh, NYPD Transportation Chair, uh, Transportation Chief, rather, William Morris, who 
I know his family is struggling and he is struggling as well today. Um, we have so much work to do ahead of us to honor the lives of those who have been lost, but also to save lives and to protect New Yorkers health and prosperity going forward. And the health is our top priority. We all must uh, follow official guidance. But as we think past the stages, uh, the past this stage of the COVID crisis, that means making tough decisions in our city budget. It means making uh, tough decisions about what our priorities will be. And, but it means being proactive and helping those. Um, for me, that's meant helping- 30 seconds. Yep, helping renters immediately, providing rental assistance, finding creative ways to help people be able to pay the next month's rent. It means that we have to advocate for our small businesses who really need our help, particularly those in the hospitality industry right now who are being hit the hardest. And it means we need to do more in our city jails where there have been the highest rate of infections. We've lost officers and uh, we have people that are incarcerated. So I know we have a lot of work to do. I'll stop there, I see my time's up. And I wanna thank everybody for their continued leadership here. And I know that we'll be working together in the weeks ahead to make sure New York is <laughs> this very difficult time. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll hear now from Council Member Levine. Council Member thank Levine, you, Madam your time leader. is starting now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your leadership, which has been outstanding throughout this crisis. Thanks to all my colleagues for what you're doing in your district and all around the, all around the city. It's really quite inspiring. As all of you know, we are about to build an entirely new public health system to prepare us for the next phase of this virus and our fight against it. Uh, we are gonna have to build a system of mass testing and contact tracing, quarantining, hoteling, isolating, transporting patients, telemedicine, IT. It's almost the equivalent of starting an entirely new city agency. Um, as big as ACS, maybe FDNY, we've never done anything like this in city history, thousands of employees. Um, it's going to be an extraordinarily challenging undertaking, but it's what we need to do to restart our economy and to get back to something remotely like normal. This is gonna to touch every one of our districts, uh, especially communities of color, which have been disproportionately hard hit in this crisis. And every one of us needs to have a role in shaping this and delivering it. Our communities need to be engaged in, in, engaged in designing this, this uh, new public health system. Uh, CBOs need to be engaged in delivering these services. Uh, so my, my call to all of you is let's work together on this to make sure that the failures of the early stage in this crisis nationally are not repeated here in New York City when we have one more seconds. shot at containing this horrible virus. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Levine, and so glad to see you as well as your family doing better. Next three speakers. Madam Majority Leader, the next three speakers are Council Members Menchaca, King, and Eugene. Councilmember Manchaka. Councilmember Manchaka, your time will start now. Hi, colleagues, and hi again. Um, the coronavirus continues to be uh, incredibly impactful, widespread across the economic. We just heard about the health stuff uh, from uh, Councilmember Levine. And immigrant New Yorkers, particularly those who are undocumented, they have uh, incredible vulnerability in this conversation. And Yet these undocumented workers and immigrant families are largely excluded from state programs like unemployment insurance and the federal relief cash payments that are and were supposed to help workers who lost their jobs or got their hours cut. And so my question to us here and to everyone at home, what will the state and the city do to help our immigrant friends and families and neighbors and colleagues? And so the governor and the mayor have already said that they're not interested in using government funding for this. Um, but I'm sure that they know that the undocumented immigrant communities contribute $40 billion a year to New York State's gross domestic product. It's according to the Fiscal Policy Institute report. And further, they pay more than a billion dollars a year in state and local taxes. So again, I, I kind of ask, what are we going to do? And where are we gonna, what are we going to do as a council? Meanwhile, uh, the ISIS, ICE is still uh, terrorizing our communities. They're holding people, including pregnant women, in detention facilities as we are um, uh, told to stay at home and, and uh, practice social distancing. So with all this, I just want to keep asking ourselves, what are we going to do? Um, and let us not um, forget that democracy, uh, we cannot assume democracy 
uh, even in this time, and that the democracy is about participation. And I'm hoping that everyone stays engaged, re-engages, whether you're a community board member, a student, an immigrant, a day laborer, no matter what language you speak or sexual orientation or gender expression, whatever, we need your help. Time's up. Maintain this the democracy. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Council Member Manchaka. Now we'll hear from Council Member King. Council Thank you, Member Majority King, Leader. Your time is starting now. Thank you, Majority Leader and Speaker. Thank you for leading today's conversation and your leadership through all this craziness that we're trying to manage. I just want to offer prayers to all the families who are suffering through this pandemic. More importantly, to all of my colleagues, all of us here who are dealing with this in our neighborhoods and in our hearts and in our households and outside of our households and praying for strength and, and health, health for everyone. Um, I just want to add uh, my voice to uh, Peter Vallone. I want to, I mean, Paul Vallone, I want to thank you for allowing me to um, be a co-prime with you with the resolution, making sure that our condos and our co-ops are not forgotten in this, uh, all these fiscal stimuluses that are coming down and making sure that we take care of those residents. Co-op City, which is the largest knock in this country, they're suffering right now. So even as we're talking about a COVID package that will make sure essential workers get raises, they're gonna have challenges meeting those financial burdens. So I want us to continue to have these conversations and make sure that we can protect everybody, small businesses, big businesses, housing and so forth. But I also wanna lend my voice, Debbie Rose and I, Council Member Royce, well, the challenge of making sure that summer youth this summer have something to do. Uh, we know that uh, the speaker, as you mentioned, the conversation has been about ending it. I'm asking us, maybe we can call on the federal government to do a uh, summer youth stimulus packet and making sure children are funded uh, and they're doing something during the summer, whether it's a school project or something to keep them engaged because of the physical responsibilities they have to their homes. I'm asking if we can look at something like that and continue that conversation with our youth. And finally, I want to talk about our small businesses, not only just small businesses, but but our black and brown small businesses, for some reason, sometimes gets left out of the pot, pot when it comes to getting that funding to our neighborhood, whether it's capacity or figuring out the rules. How do we make streamline it that this billions of dollars that's come down, hits our neighborhoods and hits them, hits them in real time. So with everyone said, I wanna wish everyone a happy Ramadan, Council Medias, happy birthday and blessings and peace to everybody. And thank you again for your leadership. God bless us all. Thank you so much, Council Member King, followed by Council Member Eugene. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Majority Council Leader. Member Eugene, your time will start now. Thank you, uh, Madam uh, Majority Leaders. Uh, we all know that uh, we are facing, as a community, as a society, we are, we are facing a horrible, horrible tragedy, the COVID-19 pandemic that has claimed the life of so many people, that has caused so many pain and suffering in our society, and also that has shut down our economy, our school, our churches, and, you know, that have affected us for so many part of our life. But we can say that the part of the devastation is because we were not ready for this type of viruses, this type of crisis. Even after SARS virus epidemic in 2002 and MERS in 2012, we were still not ready. And we put so much stress and challenges on our medical staff, doctors and nurses, and what happened, the people who have been suffering from critical disease before they couldn't even receive the critical care that they need. That the reason why I, I have introduced two pieces of res, uh, resolution, two pieces of legislation, resolution 637 and 638, asking that the city and the city and the federal government create, stand alone, medical centers and hospital to handle crises 30 seconds. by infectious disease, epidemic and pandemic, and to create also a permanent commission to study the effect of the previous crisis, health crisis on the society in order for us to be prepared. And this commission will be staffed by medical staff, elected official and expert in medicine and biology to do research on the impact of the previous uh, medical tragedy. And Time's if up. when people are infected by virus like uh, COVID-19, so pathogenic, we are going to expose the medical staff, doctors, nurses, and the previous patients. I'm Thank asking all you. my colleagues to support this uh, two legislation. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for your important work. I'd like to have the next three speakers. Madam Majority Leader, 
With your permission, I'll read the full list. There have been a number of council members who have been raising their hand and this okay. way they'll know that they've been recognized. Fair. The remaining list is council members Rodriguez, Kalos, Barron, Borelli, Constantinides, Traeger, Lander, Reynoso, Van Bramer, Jaeger, Levin, and Cabrera. The next three up are Rodriguez, Kalos, and Barron. Thank you. Councilmember Rodriguez. Councilmember Rodriguez, your time will start now. Thank you. And I think that most of you guys know, you know, what I'm gonna say, but for all New Yorkers, it's sad to be in 2020, you know, showing the face of the city of New York that we have reclaiming that we have the best hope system in the whole nation. And yes, when we see the sea code where people have access to the best health services are those sea code or the wealthy New Yorkers. When you look at the numbers and the faces of people dying, you know, God's sake, is the same systematic poverty that we have in the poorest area. You can call it in any elected official C code. I, I can tell you like Congressman Serrano, this and Serrano is like the first one poorest in the nation. Congressman Espaya district is the 11 one poorest in the nation. And you look at the faces of the Latinos and the black and the Asian, and yes, coronavirus doesn't discriminate. Anyone can get it. And we feel, you know, we really have a, our prayer for anyone, the 8.6 million New Yorkers. But there's faces of the poorest one. And the question is, what can we do? We have failed. The city has failed. We have built a city of the poor and the rich. And until we address that situation, we will be in the same place. 10, 20 years from now. Nosotros la ciudad le hemos fallado a los más pobres, a los latinos, a los negros, a los asiáticos. And I call on my progressive New Yorkers, stand up. We need to do better. We can do better. We can save life. And lastly, I would like to show our, all our support to the responders who they are putting their life to save other Time's people's up. life. Madam Majority Leader, Council Members Kalos, Barron, and Borelli. I'm waiting for the Sergeant at Arms. Has to be recognized by Majority Leader. Council Member Kalos, you're recognized to begin. Time will start now. I'm proud of the work that the council continues to do as the legislative body in responding to the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, I'm introducing two bills, one to help essential workers now and one looking ahead in hopes of bringing systemic change and improving access for underrepresented communities to our city's best schools. And you may hear uh, my daughter in the background as all of us adjust to the new normal. Uh, first introduction, 1923, that I authored with Speaker Corey Johnson and Council Member Lander to provide just cause protections to all essential workers, from those in healthcare to those in our grocery markets or making deliveries as we continue to thank and praise all these workers, including cheering them nightly. Many have faced retaliation for speaking out against unsafe conditions and demanding protective equipment to keep them safe in order to better keep us safe. Under this legislation, essential workers will be protected from retaliation or termination without just cause. Second introduction, 1924, that I authored with public advocate Williams and council members Brandon and Cornegy, aims to increase access to specialized high schools in our city where black and Latino students have lost seats over the last two decades. The legislation would finally seat every student for the specialized high school uh, admissions test, the SHSAT, unless they opted out. Universal test preparation would also be available. The education equity campaign provided a free seven week course to nearly 200 students of color with results that prove this intervention combined with seating every student would improve access. If you're watching online or 30 seconds and you need help during this pandemic, please out, reach out and we will be there for you to help. I wanna thank the council staff for working 
even harder from home, my staff, Jeff Baker, Yuzat Chowdhury, Malcolm Buterhorn, and countless others. Thank you. Thank you. I believe we lost uh, the majority leader, uh, Lance, who's next. Council members Barron, Borelli, and Constantinidis. Council member Barron. Council member Barron, your time will start now. Thank you. It's good to see all of my colleagues. You're looking well, glad to see you. I wanna thank the speaker and all of those who work to make this a reality. This is my first big Zoom conference and I'm so glad that we're doing something that's so significant. I also want to add my prayers and condolences to all who have been uh, impacted by this, whether you were diagnosed with it or you had someone else was diagnosed. As you may know, Charles and I did have it. We have recovered, although we have not been in the house in about 45 days, we're still staying in. And we wanna thank all who have been supportive of us. Um, and I also want to mention Minister Abdul Hafiz Muhammad who passed and Father Lawrence Lucas who passed also. Uh, this COVID is, Colorblind, yes, but the systems that operate in this city and in this nation are not colorblind. And the inherent racial inequities that are manifested in our health disparities, in our underfunding through the educational system, through the low family wealth that exists, through the businesses that are so greatly impact, and through the digital divide that we see are a result of the systemic historic racism on which this country has been founded. And we hear people talking about that and we wanna make sure that when we come through this, we don't have a worse situation in the aftermath, such as what we saw in Katrina. So I want to encourage everyone to be able to be mindful of making sure that we come out at the other end, we're at a more equitable place. And I wanna encourage you to support the Higher Education Committee as we appeal for CUNY to freeze tuition and to maintain the ASAP program, which is nationally recognized, and to implement the food program, which the speaker had so graciously started, and to continue the think program, because our children are going to be devastated when they come back to school in September. Thank you. Thank you, Inez. I'm glad you and Charles are better. Yes, we're better. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Borelli. Oh, go, sorry. The majority leader's back. Thank you, Councilmember Borelli. Councilmember Borelli, your time will start now. Uh, thank you. I think there was a misunderstanding. Uh, I didn't uh, uh, put myself in to speak, but while I have the conch, I just want to say uh, that I hope the council continues to take a very direct and deliberate action in supporting line of duty death benefits for all essential workers uh, whom we had asked to go to work during this crisis. The MTA took a very positive step in being the first sort of organization to guarantee these for their members. Uh, but there are a lot of, um, you know, correction employees, teachers, nurses, uh, uh, and all sorts of people, EMTs. There were two more EMTs that died in the last 24 hours. So please, let's take some definitive steps towards uh, easing the mental burden uh, that, that potentially leaving one's family destitute uh, must be uh, on the shoulders of some of our essential workers. Thank you. I agree, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Costa Costantinides. Councilmember Costantinides, your time starts now. First, I just want to thank uh, all of my colleagues for all the good wishes to my family and uh, and to really thank all of the frontline uh, workers, essential workers, healthcare workers that have been doing an amazing job under unbelievable circumstances every single day. Uh, you know, this is Earth Day today, as the speaker talked about. And, you know, last year we passed some very big legislation. And it wasn't about the goals. It's about what it, those goals mean. We're seeing the impacts of environmental racism and pollution in our environmental justice communities every single day, exasperated. The asthma rates are the breeding ground for COVID and we're losing lives in those communities. We need to act more boldly. We need to continue to move our agenda forward. We need to, we need to move our city forward in a way that protects our environmental justice communities in the long haul, because it is literally life and death. Those communities are the ones that are most impacted. They are the ones that have been bearing the brunt of uh, COVID and we must continue to do more. 
So I, I, I agree with the speaker as he talked about in his opening about needing to double down on our efforts around environmental justice, around environmental work, and ensuring the health seconds. of New Yorkers in the long term. And lastly, I'm glad to work with Councilmember Rodriguez in introducing the resolution in support of Senator Gennaris' bill to cancel rent in this critical time. We need to make sure that with all of this that's going on, that no one is losing their homes, no one is being put into debt, and we need to protect all of our New Yorkers uh, from the consequences of what is going on. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to see you doing better. Uh, Council Member Traeger. Council Member Traeger, your time will start now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you to the speaker, uh, to the staff, to all my colleagues. Uh, I extend best uh, wishes and speedy recoveries to all of us uh, and all of our communities have been greatly impacted and thank you to our staff, both central and all of our member office staff who have literally signed thousands of seniors, seniors up for deliveries, meals, uh, for helping with unemployment insurance. Uh, our staff is doing amazing work. I wanna thank them all and thank you to the speaker staff for keeping democracy going uh, in this crisis. Of course, I wanna extend our heartfelt appreciation and thanks to our healthcare heroes, our emergency first responders. And I wanna note for the record, that there are hospital executives uh, hiding out in, in mansions in Florida or in the Hamptons while EMTs in New York City who are dying from their lives on the line still making $35,000 a year seeing great pay disparity. We must address that once and for all. And I want to just clarify something for the record. We keep hearing city, state, federal leaders keep referring to schools as being closed. I want to clarify that the work of our educators continues. I speak not just as an education chair, but as a former public school teacher who speaks to my colleagues. It would take me a long time to map curriculum for the year ahead. The work of our educators has been nothing short of extraordinary. To, to those educators who have lost colleagues, who are grieving in their families seconds. and their school communities, we see you. The fact that our educators have put together curriculum maps online in this new era of remote learning in under a week or two weeks, we see you. The fact that you're still teaching and educating while taking care of your own families and grieving losses, we see you. The fact that you're doing wellness calls to your students, checking in on, on their wellness at home, we see you. The fact that educators are raising money from their own pockets to feed their kids, up. to feed their students, and to buy them clothes, we see you. And I hope my colleagues, we see them and we hear them in the budget process. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your time. Thank you, Councilmember Traeger, and thank you for your passion and your persistence. I'd now like to call on Councilmember Lander, followed by Councilmember Van Bramer. Councilmember Lander, your time is starting now. Thank you, Majority Leader, and thank you, Speaker Johnson. And a big thanks to the staff who made this possible, and I also want to echo to my own staff who are just working extraordinarily hard. Colleagues, it is unbelievably powerful to be with you right now. These are some of the darkest times that we will live through, some of the darkest times of any generation. And we're seeing extraordinary pain and anguish in the families who are suffering, in the workers who have to be out there, in people who have lost their jobs or afraid of losing their homes. But we are also seeing some incredible courage, some of the most courageous action we've ever seen obviously in our emergency rooms and in our hospitals, but by so many of our essential workers as well. And I'm glad that we are back in business today trying to do our part inspired by those workers to honor it and to make sure we live up to what we're saying. So I know that many of you like me love going out at 7 p.m. every night and banging pots and pans and screaming as loudly as we can to say thank you to the people who are stocking the shelves in our grocery stores, delivering food and supplies, driving people to work and appointments, and caring for sick New Yorkers in our hospitals and our nursing homes. But let's remember so many of those people are low-income New Yorkers. They're working in low-wage jobs. They're women, they're people of color. And we might be banging pots and pans, but we haven't done enough to make sure that they've got the pay and the sick leave and the workplace protections and the dignity that they so deeply deserve. 30 seconds. So I'm proud today, along with the speaker, Councilmember Kalos and Councilmember Cumbo, to be introducing the New York City Essential Worker Bill of Rights, which will go beyond cheering 
to make sure that our gig workers have paid sick leave, that workers can't be fired for speaking out about health and safety conditions and making sure people get some extra pay if they are working for large companies and having the courage to go out and work in this period of time. It's a powerful piece of legis uh, a package of legislation. I really hope you'll join Time's us. Time's up. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Councilmember Lander. And I stand corrected. We have Councilmember Reynoso, followed by Councilmember Van Bramer, and then followed by Councilmember Cabrera. Councilmember Reynoso, your time starts now. Thank you. Um, I also want to make sure that I thank the uh, Sergeant at Arms for all the work they're doing and participating in uh, keeping everything in order. To Lance, um, we're big process geeks, so love the parliamentarian role. Um, and again, to all the staff, including my staff, that is working hard during this, uh, this pandemic. Um, I want to make sure that I state uh, while this virus uh, sees us all the same, the inequities in our communities um, have made it very clear that there are certain types of groups of people um, and folks of socioeconomic status that are being treated um, uh, unfairly or inequitably in our system. And I think uh, it's going to be extremely important moving forward that business is not done as usual. Uh, we are able to start riding the ship of inequity after this crisis. And I hope that uh, many of our colleagues start uh, drawing a line as to how exactly we're going to do that. It is very clear that our neighborhoods of South Bronx, North Brooklyn and Southeast Queens have the highest rates of asthma in all of the city. And it is no, uh, and because of that, it is why they're dying at a higher rate than anywhere else in the city. Um, so I think it's very important that we start having these conversations and not concede or compromise in making sure we drive ourselves out of um, <clears throat> this equitable, uh, this inequity. Uh, I also know that the budget is something we're talking about right now. There are some agencies like seconds. the NYPD that has not taken the st same steps of, as other agencies like the Department of Education when it comes to cuts that need to happen so that we could start talking about equity again. And then we also have um, uh, initiatives like Thrive that um, don't necessarily do the job that we thought they should be doing that have also not taken enough cuts. So we should really have a conversation about where these cuts are coming from and stop uh, allowing for the initiatives that are supposed to bring about equity um, to continue to get cut. Time's up. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Van Bramer. Thank, thank you very much. Mayor Bramer, first. your time will start now. Thank you. I, I want to thank uh, the speaker and the entire staff for making this possible. Uh, I too want to begin by thanking the members of my staff who have been working uh, nonstop uh, at home since this all began. Uh, I also want to recognize uh, the public housing residents, uh, the good folks of Queensbridge, Ravenswood, Woodside Houses, Astoria Houses, um, uh, just now we're hearing all of these plans from the governor and the mayor to talk about how we're going to help people in public housing, but that's about eight weeks later than we should have had uh, a plan to talk about how we were going to help folks in public housing um, get through this crisis. Um, I also want to talk about the fact that uh, when we talk about essential workers, and I'm proud of the work this council is doing in expanding the definition, but uh, I was raised by a woman who worked in a supermarket uh, and my stepfather was a janitor who cleaned uh, the floors and the bathrooms at junior high school 10 in Astoria. Uh, grocery store workers and janitors are essential workers and so many of them have put their lives on the line during this crisis. Uh, every time I go to a supermarket, uh, I thank profusely uh, the men and women who are working there, risking their lives so that other people can eat. Um, and I just want to say again, thank you to all of the first responders, all of the people who gathered together. 30 and seconds. I'm wearing this tie. As you can see, I mentioned Meyer Bamoris, uh, who helped raise me. He was a huge Met fan. Uh, and this tie I wore in his honor. It is a red and blue tie. It is the colors of the Mets. And finally, I want to recognize because we will rename the street for Tarlock McNeilish, who was a great uh, Irish LGBT activist uh, uh, who died of COVID-19 and I want to recognize him. There'll be plenty more time to talk about his legacy going forward, but thank Time's you up. to him as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will now hear from council members and I, and I also am making a correction, Jaeger, Levin, and then Cabrera. 
Council Member, your time will start now. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I, I also want to uh, add my thanks, as been mentioned before on this floor, uh, to uh, the members of the staff of the City Council, particularly Jason, uh, members of the General Council team, and the folks who worked very hard to uh, get this meeting off and to get our operations complete. And I also want to thank my own staff uh, who have been uh, working incredibly hard to keep our office operational um, and to uh, uh, keep serving the people who sent me to the City Council. Um, I, I think I would be remiss if I don't take a few seconds at least to honor um, in more time uh, than I have available, he deserves, uh, my predecessor, Councilman Noah Dir, Justice of the Supreme Court, um, who was taken at the prime of his life, uh, somebody who had given so much to his community, uh, somebody who was a friend of mine um, and a friend of so many and who was a leader in our body for 18 years, uh, was elected to the city council when I was still in my single digits and I've known him practically my entire life and it was a shocking and tremendous loss, um, which is not to belittle the losses that all communities in this city have seen. Uh, we have all lost so many. Uh, my grandmother uh, passed away uh, last week, Monday. Uh, the Nova Minsk Rebbe, who is, was a giant in Torah Jewry, who gave so much of his life to help build our community here in America, um, was taken from us prior to his time in a tragic way. 30 seconds. Uh, my own Rosh Yeshiva of Ger, of David Olevsky. And of course, this needs to be mentioned, uh, the dozens and dozens of names that I know, uh, people who were able to escape the brutality of Hitler and the Nazis and who were survivors of the Holocaust and whose numbers I touched on their arms who have lost their lives in the last several days and weeks. And I honor their memory and I will continue doing that. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Council Member Yeager. And we will now hear from Council Member Levin and then Cabrera. Council Member Levin, Thank your you, time will start now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Um, I just want to echo my colleague's sentiments um, uh, in extending our condolences to everybody that has lost a loved one, um, everybody who has um, uh, who has gone through um, a painful illness. Um, this has been um, one of the darkest hours uh, that our city has ever known. Um, and uh, it is devastating and heartbreaking uh, for all of us. And we extend our uh, love to, to everybody in New York City who is suffering today. Um, we want to acknowledge all of the tremendous work that uh, our healthcare workers, uh, our first responders, uh, everybody that's going to work in uh, every essential capacity, grocery stores, pharmacies, um, delivery workers, um, people at working at an auto body shop or um, tire changing place, uh, everybody that's, that's doing a tremendous amount of putting themselves out on the line um, uh, in the service of your fellow New Yorker, um, we express our gratitude. Um, colleagues, I, I uh, am introducing a piece of legislation today as well, um, intro 1927, which would extend to individuals in shelter, uh, in a congregate setting, or in uh, unsheltered environment. Um, the right to a hotel room during this crisis. The fact of the matter is there are still uh, thousands upon thousands of New Yorkers who are in congregate shelters. Um, it is a very dangerous and risky place to be, um, and we owe it to them Time's up. Uh, to be able to give them um, an appropriate setting uh, so that we can um, avoid an outbreak um, on our watch in our shelter system. So I ask uh, my colleagues to sign on to intro 1927. Thank you. Thank you. And Council Member Cabrera. Thank Council you so Member much. Cabrera, your time will start now. Thank you so much. And I can see uh, the time clock, so uh, no need for the reminder of 30 seconds. But I want to take, I give a, uh, take a moment to thank the speaker, uh, to all my colleagues uh, very early on. As, as you know, my son came down uh, with coronavirus. Um, probably I was 
probably the first elected official to have a family member go through this. I had all kinds of uh, feelings. I was scared. I was uh, upset. I was, um, I, I think I felt all the feelings uh, that a father could feel. And then my daughter came down with it, their spouses, their, my grandchildren. And, uh, and the reason I'm mentioning uh, this right now, I don't want us to go through what we could have done before. We couldn't done the quarantine before. We, we should have done the testing, the appropriate testing, and we were not prepared. And so we're talking about inequities, uh, inequities right now. Uh, let me just say that I, I, I'm hopeful that we're not waiting until this is over uh, for the inequities to be taken care of. We need to address them now. Now that we're gonna have antibody tests, they're already started. They should be uh, in our, uh, in the deepest, hardest hit uh, area should, take, should, should be taking place. And areas that was most affected, the help needs to come now. This recession is gonna last. Uh, it's not gonna be all gone in, in a year. Uh, it's gonna take years for us to recover. So we need to be wise. We need to uh, appropriate all the funding that we need and we need to do it uh, now as we go through this budget and to be able uh, to stand proud in June to make sure that we have uh, a good budget for all. Thank you so much. Thank you and Council Member Rose. Council Member Rose, your time will start now. Thank you. Um, like all of my colleagues, I wanna say, Thank you to the speaker, our colleagues in government for all of their efforts on behalf of, of the citizens of New York City. But I wanna thank more especially the first responders and the essential workers for all that they have done and their selfless efforts to keep all of us safe and healthy. Um, you know, there were some inequities in terms of treatment um, within the categories of first responders and essential workers. And I hope that we are going to make sure that that doesn't happen, that the workers who are working in the nursing homes and the group homes um, and in the shelters are equally as protected as the workers in, um, in other areas that, you know, none of our civil servants should have to put their lives in, je in jeopardy. So I, I want us to continue the fight for them and I wanna to say to um, teens in charge, take charge, that of course we're gonna fight for SYEP and um, that my colleagues are, are behind us and we're going to make sure that there is some kind of programming for young people this summer. So you don't have to waste your efforts on us. Go talk to the administration about saving um, SYEP. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Rose, and thank you so much for your leadership and your fight for our young people. Now, Councilmember Holden. I right, thank you, everyone, and certainly Council thank Member you. Holden, your time will start now. Thank you again. Uh, I want to thank Corey Johnson, speaker, did a great job mm -hmm. during the pandemic, along with Jason Goldman, to set up this historic uh, meeting, which is uh, where I, I love being part of the uh, city council. But doing this is such a, a task, I can imagine, and I want to thank them again. I want to thank my great staff who are working really hard during this uh, pandemic, and it puts, it puts a lot of stress on everyone. But also, I want to just mention about the people who have lost loved ones. And right now, I have a lot of cemeteries in my district, and we're seeing a lot of funerals, but the, the cemeteries have cut back. Uh, on their burials because of the lack of staff. So they need help. I wrote to the mayor, wrote to the governor a number of times, to try to get the out of work construction workers to help out uh, in, in, the, uh, in the cemeteries and get paid for it. Um, because we're waiting now, families are calling me, they're waiting two and three weeks for funerals. And, and it's, it really puts more stress on them, obviously. So we, re we really need to step up as a city and help out the, uh, the cemetery. So. Thank you again, everyone, and uh, uh, and really stay safe. Thank you. Thanks, Bob, to you and Amy and to your kids and grandkids. Thanks Thank so you. Much. Are there any other members who are on the list to speak, Parliamentarian? No, Madam Majority Leader, there are no other members. 
I just want to close out by thanking again Speaker Corey Johnson and all my colleagues here today. Um, this is historic and it's unprecedented and there's nothing harder, I would say, that all of us have experienced as being leaders to have to lead from inside. We naturally want to be up front. We naturally want to be at the forefront. And for me, as a mom of a two-year-old with two parents that are both over the age of 80, it has been the hardest thing as a leader to have to stay indoors and to have to lead my community at the same time. But I want to thank this council because you all have led the efforts from everything from fighting to close our schools, to alternate side of the street parking suspensions, to closing our playgrounds, for the fight for our small businesses, for the fight for PPE, because we know that we sent many people, many black and brown people, many women of color onto the front lines without protective gear. And it's a tragedy that they were sent out in that way. And we're gonna do everything that we can in our council to fight for them, to make sure that we right these wrongs and that we continue to fight for them because they have made it so that many of us could leave from inside. So I wanna thank everybody, especially on the council for what we did for, to get emergency food aid to many of our shut-ins, for many of our seniors who could not go out and get food, who could not go out and get the packages of food from the food pantries and the deliveries that have been made. I wanna lift up mutual aid in one community in my district who've been working with our NYCHA tenant leaders, many of them who are senior citizens who are out on the front lines getting the food for the seniors and they themselves can't be out there and, I, and, and should not be out there. And I, I just wanna thank my staff. It's so hard to call staff to give them an assignment and you find out that they're on their way to the hospital or they have to get tested or their kids are sick or their parents are sick. This has been really a very challenging time. And I just wanna lift up while there have been so many passings in my district, I wanna lift up Dr. Roy Hastick, who is the founder of the Chamber of the, the, the Caribbean American Chamber of Commerce who is a king of Brooklyn, who has done so much to advance local businesses in the Caribbean community, as well as Pastor Gwen Dingle, who has been a fighter and a champion on the front lines of the HIV movement. She is a, a powerful leader, and we are so sorry that we have lost her as well. And, and we're gonna continue to look forward and, and to continue to lead. And thank you so much. And I beg of you, please stay home. This is not over. While the numbers are leveling, this is far from over and we have to continue to stay at home, practice social distancing, to wear our masks and to take this very seriously. So with that, Speaker Corey Johnson, I turn it over to you to close out this meeting. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for bringing this body together and thank you for hosting this unprecedented meeting that has kept us all at home today and is a, a thankful wish to Earth Day that we were not out there and gave the Earth a break. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for those incredibly moving uh, closing remarks. I'm really grateful for your leadership. And I just want to wrap up by thanking all of you, all of the members of this body who have been working around the clock to serve your constituents and to look out for the future of New York City. I want to echo and reiterate some of the, I think, very poignant and uh, smart and helpful remarks that the majority leader just gave, especially as it relates to how we're all in this together. Uh, we need to continue to practice social distancing. You know, three weeks ago, we were losing 900 New Yorkers a day. Now the number is down to about 450, half of that. But that is still an astounding number of people who are dying every single day of COVID-19 in New York City. And as painful and difficult as it is, for New Yorkers to be socially distanced right now and physically isolated. It is so important for us to do that because we need to relieve and keep that pressure off of our healthcare system. We need to think about these healthcare heroes making their jobs easier. These folks that are scared every single day leaving their homes, leaving their loved ones and their children going into work to save other people. We need to think about these grocery store workers who are getting on the subway every single day, leaving their homes so that New Yorkers can still get food. We have to think about the NYPD officers and the firefighters and the correction officers, the subway conductors and the bus drivers, the postal workers and the pharmacists, all of these workers that are keeping our city going right now, they are our heroes. And we are immensely, immensely grateful 
for what they have done during this time. We need to lift them up by making sure they are protected and paid better, but also to keep them safe by continuing the social distancing that's in place. We're gonna to have to start to have the conversation about what mass testing looks like, about what contact tracing looks like, about what surveillance looks like, so that we can actually go at this virus and take it uh, and do our best to make sure that we are able to safely at some point reopen and do it in the right way, not in a rushed way or a rash way, but in a smart way by looking at what other cities and countries and around the world have been doing. This city council, I want New Yorkers to know, all of the members have been working every single day to serve their communities and to look at these broader issues that are affecting our great city. I think it's important to level with New Yorkers about how difficult this is and how the days ahead are gonna be difficult, but also talk about the hope that I have. It's gonna be difficult because there's going to be a shared sacrifice involved. A shared sacrifice as it relates to making painful budget decisions we would never want to contemplate. Uh, difficult because we're going to have to continue, even when we start to try to uh, reopen in a small way with mandatory mask wearing and social distancing and the things that are going to be required of us. These things are going to change our way of life, but I am hopeful. And I am hopeful because our city is the greatest city in the world. And it's the greatest city in the world, not because of our geography, but because of the 8.6 million New Yorkers who live here. They are the beating heart of New York City. They are the soul of New York City. We are the most diverse city in the United States of America. Queens County is the most diverse county in the United States of America. And we have seen incredible sacrifice and solidarity during the last five to six weeks. We have seen neighbors take care of neighbors. We have seen people do food deliveries. We have seen these essential workers put their lives on the line. We have seen young people delivering groceries to older people. We have seen all of this in one of the most painful moments in our history. And I have hope that we can get through this. We will be a changed city. Our city will not be the same, but we can still come back if we remain united if we are compassionate and kind and strategic and thoughtful about how to get through this. And that is gonna require us looking at some of the hard and glaring truths that exist, the truths on disparities, the truths on uh, uh, structural racism that exists in our society. And I hope that we can take this moment as a transformation point. In the 1940s, after the war, the UK decided to set up the NHS, their National Healthcare Service, knowing they needed to do something transformational. It is my hope that we'll be able to do something transformational here. Healthcare needs to be a basic civil right, not tied to employment, not tied to profit. We need to make sure that all New Yorkers are being protected. And you have seen these frontline workers, most of them black and brown people, most of them black and brown women who have continued to step up day after day. We need to recognize that. We need to honor them and protect them and make decisions that are going to help them and their families moving forward. That is the best way to actually honor the lives of all of the New Yorkers that we have lost. Our North Star in this budget process and moving forward is to take care and protect the most vulnerable, to ensure that we are doing right by all of these families that have lost loved ones and the families that continue to sacrifice every single day. These glaring holes in our social safety net when it comes to housing and food and healthcare and wages are more glaring than ever right now in the midst of this pandemic. But if we stay united, if we stay one New York, just like we got through the fiscal crisis of the 1970s, just like we got through 9-11 together, just like we got through the Great Recession together, and just like we got through Hurricane Sandy together. We can get through this, but we need to look out for our young people and our seniors and our public housing residents and our healthcare workers and our essential workers and all of these folks that are counting on us. That needs to be our North Star. So I am incredibly grateful for the staff that made today possible. I'm grateful to all of you for being part of this historic meeting today. We have committee hearings coming up tomorrow and Friday and next week. And I wanna thank you all for your solidarity and for your continued support and working together 
to help our city get out of one of the biggest crises that we've ever faced. So I wanna thank you, Madam Majority Leader, for doing a wonderful job today in being the presiding officer of this meeting. <clears throat> I wanna thank Lance Pollavy for being our parliamentarian and doing a great job. I wanna thank all the sergeants who have been on the call led by Carl D'Alba, our director of security. I wanna thank Jason Goldman, my chief of staff and all of the, uh, all of the uh, central staff members at the council and district office members who have been working remotely, serving constituents, getting us up and going, drafting bills, working on the city's budget. We have been working around the clock and we will continue to do that. So with that, Madam Majority Leader, I wanna sign off and tell New York City, I love you. We love this great city and we will get through this together. So with that, the stated meeting of April 22nd, 2020 is now adjourned. Godspeed, be safe New York City, we're here for you.